without much further ado, Ram, uh, here it is, session six. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Radhika. Thank you very much. And good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks once again uh, for joining me for another session on good living practices. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen here. I hope you can see it. Good. Um, so as we discussed earlier, and just to recapitulate, uh, good living practices is all about keeping our body, mind and emotions in sync, functioning as one unit, uh, not just for, for a brief moment, not for a second, not for a moment, but 24 by seven. And that's when we'll experience optimal health. And when we talk about immunity, remember that word is coming up again and again and again in this pandemic. Uh, people generally think of immunity as something physical, but please remember when we talk about immunity, it's also about immunity at the level of the body, at the level of the mind, and at the level of emotions as well. And in the, in the, in the previous few sessions, I actually talked about how to build that immunity, how to experience that unity of body, mind, and emotions. We talked about mindfulness uh, eating practices. We talked about uh, you know, eating and cooking the food as being a meditative act. I told you the importance of why it is necessary to keep that state of mind when you're eating and cooking your food. And we also talked about chewing for a count of 25 to 30 as a means for properly digesting the food, all right? And uh, I also talked about the importance of keeping a big meal at noon. This coincides with the, um, with the sun being at its peak and that actually influences the digestive clocks in our body, uh, which will enhance the digestive process. I talked about maintaining a 12 hour minimum fast between dinner and breakfast, the next day's breakfast, um, in order to enhance the clarity of the mind, to, in order to enhance the strength of the brain, and in order, to un, uh, in order to make it more resilient. I also told you about the importance of keeping a three hour gap between meals. So instead of keeping on snacking, especially for people who have uh, you know, sugar issues, who have diabetes, uh, who, have high, who are also having hypertension issues, it's always a good practice to keep a gap of at least three hours between two meals, okay? And then of course, the other important uh, feature is to have a three hour gap between your dinner and sleep. Um, I see no point, there's absolutely no point in eating uh, on a full meal and then going to bed immediately. Or on that matter, it's also not advisable to be eating late in the night past your due time and sleeping very, uh, very late as well. Uh, because just as the rising sun, I mean, the, the sun at its peak coinciding the digestive clock in the same way when the sun sets uh, that's also an indication for the clock genes in the body to go low on the digestive uh, 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 system. And so, you know, nighttime, we always like to say that, please try to have an early meal and then keep a three hour gap between your dinner and sleep. I spoke about the importance of physical exercise. Physical exercise is very much a part of maintaining that oneness of the body, mind and emotions, uh, extremely good. I also told about the importance of mental exercises, uh, exercises that you can use for training the brain, for enhancing what we call the neuroplasticity of the brain. This is what we call sculpting or molding the brain so that the brain is always active and resilient. And then I said, uh, you know, a combination of conscious, eat, conscious and mindful eating plus a 12 hour fast, plus a 30 minutes mental exercise, followed by a 30 minutes physical exercise actually is very helpful in building a strong immunity at all three levels of body, mind, and emotions. And then last session, we talked about bringing in one more good living practice and has talked about the importance of selfless service, selfless service of any kind in any form for any duration in order to sustain the health benefits at all three levels. Now, let's look at another aspect of ourselves where the strength and nourishment is necessary in order to maintain the immunity at all three levels of body, mind, and emotions. Now, 
you take you all of us who have a car you take your vehicle to the mechanic for maintenance right and this could be either every 5000 miles you know it shows up on a dashboard saying that it's time for a checkup or it's time for a maintenance or the mechanic the mechanic in the last um, uh, the last visit would have placed a sticky on the on the on the dashboard saying that after certain miles please visit us again the mechanic employs some procedures what we call the standard operating procedures and checks cleans and replaces the various parts of the car the filters the fluids uh, and the question is why do we do that we do that only because by maintaining a regular maintenance of our car we it's prone it's less prone to mechanical problems driving a poorly maintained car okay invites serious problems since you cannot predict when the brakes will fail when the engine will fail or when the components will break down so periodic tune ups of your car of any vehicle that you have is necessary in order to play it safe and in order to avoid situations where you can put your life in danger now let's apply that same concept to our own body the question i would like to ask you is when was the last time that you gave your body a tune up when you can do for your car why can't you do for your body as well our bodies are extremely specialized and more complex than a car than a vehicle and yet there are some similarities when it comes to tuning and maintenance for instance regular self care and tuning of the body is necessary is required in order to maintain our immunity in order to sustain our immunity in order to make sure that we overcome any serious health issues and in order to live an optimal life so just as the mechanic uses certain procedures to check the oil levels to check the filters to check the belts the fluids the tire pressures and the treads on the tires we also need a similar standard operating procedure for our bodies to be tuned up okay the question is where do we start well you don't have to look deeper in order to tune up your body look to the five sense organs in yoga and ayurveda philosophy we say the five sense organs are the gateways or the portals or think of them as the filters if you nourish these five sense organs you are nourishing the body you are nourishing the brain and you are nourishing the emotions the five sense organs are the ears sense of uh, hearing skin sense of touch eyes sense of vision tongue sense of taste and nose sense of smell these five sensory organs they serve as the portals or gateways to your own self you use these five sense organs in order to draw external information and then once you draw in this information you then translate that objectively okay in order to experience a subjective response or in order to have a subjective response in other words if you take healthy positive impressions through your senses okay your subjective response will be feelings of joy happiness and harmony if we on the other hand absorb unhealthy impressions through the five senses because these are the gateways remember gateways to the body and the mind so if we absorb unhealthy impressions through these five senses we are going to experience sub optimal health okay and this is when we'll fall prey to any health issues and suffering so it's extremely important to understand that through these five, five sense organs you have to bring in only harmonious impressions that will keep your body brain and emotions in harmony okay so in the next couple of sessions we will talk about each sense organ because each one in by itself is a huge one today we'll focus on the first sense organ which is the ears okay it's the sense of hearing and i like to say that you are what you hear 
the ears, they receive the sound waves from the outside world. And these sound waves are amplified in the middle ear. Okay, we have the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The sound waves are converted into nerve impulses, which are then transported to specific areas of the brain. In the brain, these impulses are perceived as a sound wave. So this progression of the sound is extremely important because what we bring in through our ears or what we hear is going to affect our emotions, our mind and physical body. Just think about it. So if you listen to pleasant sounds, okay, the brain is going to convert that. And in addition to perceiving it as a pleasant sound, you also release feel good chemicals, neurochemicals in the brain. And these feel good neurochemicals will then create a positive experience. And that's why you say that, ha, those sounds are very beautiful. Now, there are some common sounds that are a part of our daily lives, including the noise from the road, the rail, the air traffic, the occupational noises, the industrial noises if you're close to an industry. Okay, now compare those noises to the sounds of nature, like the birds, the trees, and if you're living in San Francisco or the Bay Area, the waves of the ocean, or the sounds of the music. The music could be high metallic noise, or it could be a pleasant uh, sounds, or the noise from the television, or from the videos. Whatever be the sounds, all these are going to have an impact on the ears, and then further, it will have impact on the health as well. It could be a better impact or it could be a worse impact. In addition to these sounds, think about another aspect. The words that we use in our communication. Because words are also sounds. They have their own subtle energies. And they can profoundly affect not just the speaker, but the recipient as well. So think about when you heard some curse words. Any curse words or abusive language or abusive words will negatively affect when you hear them. Compare that to words that are full of joy, positivity, or loving words, or words of encouragement. And those words have an uplifting or a positive effect, not just on the receiver, but even you, when you see the other person receiving those words, immediately it shows up in the form of a smile on the receiver. That smile is enough to put you as a doer in a positive spirit. So it's extremely important, my friends, about the choice of words you use because it can affect not only you as the speaker, but it can also affect the receiver as well. Now, in addition to all the noises that you bring in through these years, in addition to the words that you use or the words that you listen, there are other ways to strengthen and nourish the ears. Okay, so number one is communication. Number two is what you listen to, what you plan to listen to. And number three, so these are the two ways you can nourish your ears. And now there are other physical ways also to nourish the ears. This is one yogic aspect. It's called Karna Mastiska Yoga. Karna means ears. Mastiska is the brain. Okay, so you, just this yoga act alone will tell you that there's a connection between the ears and the brain. This is actually based on the principle of acupressure points on the ear. Okay, in Ayurveda, we have what we call specific acupressure points. We call them marma points. And there are marma points at the edge or at the lower end of ears and behind the ears. Okay, and if when these get stimulated, it energizes or recharges the brain. One way to stimulate those acupressure points or those marma points are doing this yogic technique. Okay, it's called Karna Masiska Yoga. For people who are in pranic healing, okay, uh, who are used to this, they call it super brain yoga. And now there are a lot of studies, evidence based studies to show that when you do this yogic practice, it actually improves your academic performance. So for children out there, this is an extremely good technique 
it improves your work performance. So for people who are working in a stressful environment, this becomes very important. It also allows you to participate, whether it is in a class, whether it is in a teamwork, whether it is in a meeting, it improves your social skills and it increases the electrical activity in the brain in the sense that it actually puts the brain into a neuroplasticity mode. Okay, and the way we do this is, uh, some of you may be familiar with this because we all received this as part of a punishment in the class when we were in, when we were youngsters in the school. Okay, I know the pranic healing guys, they do it a little differently, but here I'm doing it as not as a pranic healing exercise, but as a regular exercise to maintain the, to maintain and strengthen the ears. Okay, so what it involves is, it involves crossing your arms, holding the ear lobes, okay, and then squatting. So usually what we do is we first take our left hand, okay, and then we hold the right ear lobe, okay, with the thumb and the forefinger, with the thumb in the front, okay, and then we cross over the right hand over the left, and then we hold the left elbow. I mean, the left elbow is uh, the left elbow is over, is underneath the right elbow. And then you hold the left ear lobe with the right thumb and the right forefinger. So at this point, what you should be doing is you should be applying pressure to both the ear lobes simultaneously. And while holding it, okay, you inhale and then you bend your knees and you gently squat. How much can you squat? Well, it depends on your levels of flexibility. If your hips are flexible, and if you have no issues with your spinal cord, especially your lower lumbar area and your lower sacral area, and if your hips are strong, you can go down all the way, or you can do a semi-squat. Hold the pose for a few seconds, and then you, as you exhale, you come up. So this is a yogic way of doing it. Okay, now the question is, when do you do that? Well, you can do it any number of times at any time. Okay, as a yogic exercise. Okay, because I'm sure if, if there are anybody who is doing pranic healing in that audience, they'll take exception with what I'm saying, but this is not a pranic healing exercise. This is a yogic exercise. So for yogic exercise, you can do it anytime. Okay, and you can do any number of times. You can do it five times, six times, nine times. Usually the way I like to do it is because we have nine planets, Navagraha, I like to do it nine times. And I like to do it facing the sun. So when I do it facing the sun, I'm usually doing it in the morning, okay, when the sun is just about to rise. So repeat this technique, okay, nine times, you repeat, this, you can do this nine times, you can do it five times, you can do it any number of times, as long as you are fine with it, okay? So please make sure that this is individualized exercise, okay? What applies to one will not apply to the other person. Very, very important, okay? If one of you, if you're doing it as a family exercise, if one of you is squatting and the other person is not able to squat, don't be judgmental because each one of us has got different levels of flexibility. All right. The next practice of maintaining and strengthening your ears, thereby the brain and the body and the emotions, you know, to improve immunity is what we call the oleation technique. The oleation technique is a technique that involves intra-auricular application. I know it's a big mouthful, but it's a simple technique called where you add oil into your ears. In, the, in Ayurveda, we call it Karna Purana. Karna is ears, Purana is treatment. Okay, so what do you use? You can use either coconut oil, you can use sesame oil, you can use almond oil, or you can use olive oil. And my suggestion is best to use it at room temperature. Okay, if you're using coconut oil, you'll have to melt it, okay, and slightly warm it. You don't want to heat it up, slightly warm it. You don't want to use it too cold as well, okay, slightly warm it. So what you do is you, 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 you decide where you want to put first, okay? So if you want to put it in the right ear first, then tilt your head sideways with a dropper, as shown here in this figure, with a dropper, take two to three drops of the oil, put it into your, into your ear, and then remember, there's no hole directly to allow the oil to pass through, okay? So just hold it for some moments. You can even massage your ear just for a few 30 seconds or so, and then come back to neutral position and then repeat it on the other side, okay? 
extremely good, my friends. Really helpful for all those people who have issues with the ear. Especially as we age, we notice a lot of problems. Either it is too much of wax that'll, that'll block the ear signals or too less of a wax, which causes a lot of pain and numbness or sound in the ears. All these can be mitigated just by dropping a few drops of oil. And you do this every day. I would suggest doing it in the night, especially but just before you go to bed. So maybe a couple of half an hour or one hour before you go to bed, put it in the ears so that you know when you're sleeping, there's less of activity. And then next day morning, your ears will feel much better. Okay. So oleation is a very good technique to maintain and strengthen the ears. The other thing is listening to the sounds of nature. I always like to sit in the yard for a few moments. You can do it any time of the day. It's early morning or after breakfast or lunch or dinner, especially now when you're, when you're working from home, it's always a good practice to you know, take breaks in between. Remember in the physical exercise chapter, I told you about how it's always a good practice to take a break after one hour of sitting. So this is the time when uh, each time you take a break, just go to the yard if you can, and you just sit there, close your eyes and listen to the sounds of nature. If you're close to a ocean, you can go and listen to the sounds of the water waves. You can go to the park and sit there for a few moments. Just pay attention to the sounds of nature. Don't have any dramas in your mind. Just concentrate on the sounds of nature and just breathe normally. Okay. And each time your mind goes away, okay, just bring it back to this to this uh, to the sounds of nature. Okay, do this one to five minutes, 30 seconds, one minute, one and a half minutes. Okay. And if you do that on a regular basis every day, it really is very helpful, my friends. Now, in addition to the physical sounds, okay, your sense of sound also involves paying attention to your own inner voice. Okay, and different cultures have got different ways of putting that. You can call it the voice of the God or the voice of the soul or the voice of your true self, whatever it is, there is a certain voice that tells you the truth. It tells you what is good and what is bad. This is the voice of whatever you call it, the intellect or voice of the mind or the voice of the emotions or consider it as a truthful voice. It's a, it's a voice that you can pay trust to. It's a trustworthy source of accuracy and truth. When you listen to that inner voice and allows it and allow it to guide you, you will immediately recognize your own biases and your own assumptions. Okay. And as you become more tuned to your inner voice, you will develop a sense of inner hearing and knowing that is wise and that is true. So spend each time in a day noticing whether you hear to, to your own true self, to your own inner voice. Okay, and let that voice help you to guide your thoughts, actions, and decisions. All right. So, the question is I'm sure a lot of people will ask what, what about headphones and Bluetooth and all that stuff and the wireless devices that we have in our ears? It's become so common, right? I mean, we are using these devices throughout, especially now that we're working from home. You can see me now when I'm talking to you, I'm having these earphones, okay? Is there, a, is there a, uh, an evidence-based study to show that these effect? You know, the evidence is there. There are a lot of, people, lot of work on, on, on how we receive our sounds using our earphones or the headphones and the Bluetooth enabled devices and how it is affecting. The problem is there is a, there, the, the way the studies have been done, the design has not been so good. So you have mixed messages coming in, okay? We do not know whether it is serious enough to affect our quality of life. But what I have noticed in my practices, a lot of people when they come complaining about ear pains or ear aches or migraines and all that, I have told them to restrict the amount of sound that's coming from artificial devices. And sure enough, a lot of them have come, come back to me saying that they feel much better. Okay, especially those people who have, you know, who have stopped listening to these devices or who are not using the devices. Now, the FDA has not come out with any uh, issues. No, I mean, they are not saying that don't do it. Okay, they have failed to show, in fact, any association between exposure to devices and health issues. So for people who are out there who are looking to scientific uh, based, based studies, I don't have any strong scientific evidence to show that it, it is harmful or harmless, but I'll always recommend moderate use. Okay, in fact, if you're willing to completely restrict the use, 
I would say even better. That's even better. So if you tune your ears regularly and avoid these uh, devices, you will definitely notice improvements in your own sense of hearing. And you will develop a greater appreciation of what you receive and what you give out. Okay. So please remember, you are what you hear. Okay. So let me stop here and stop sharing. And we can go over some of the questions, some of the questions from the past sessions, questions from this session, or if you have any other questions from health point of view. Thank you, Ram. Uh, that was very, very informative. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, not to sound facetious, but when we were asked to do, you know, uh, teachers punished us about, uh, you know, when we were not behaving and asked us to do the murga, which was like this and bending, didn't know that that had some benefit uh, also. Just yeah. Uh, joke. yeah, in fact, Radhika, it's, very, it's a very interesting point you bring about because when I wrote that book, there were a few teachers who wrote to me from India saying that yeah. now you guys know why we were doing this to the students, <laughs> which makes sense. You know, they, even though they didn't say that we are doing this to enhance your hearing or to enhance your concentration, I think that was the entire, because this came from the Vedic period. So I think yeah. that was the whole background that if you do this, maybe it will improve your concentration, maybe it will improve your mental makeup, maybe you'll become more attentive, maybe you'll yeah. become more aware. And, you know, and now we have evidence-based studies. This is especially true because we have evidence-based studies to support all these, all these Correct. concepts. And, you know, the, the thing in, in Tamil, we used to call it topical, where, you right. know, in, in front of Ganesha, you would do that as, a, you know, offering it in, in the same way that you're, you know, apologize for all the mistakes and errors that you're doing. So that used to be a, the, the same kind of, uh, you know, doing the same way, you know, holding your ears and then bending down and squatting. Right. And right. Uh, you would do it for about 25 times or 50 times or whatever it was. And right. uh, so that was considered like a penance, but penance, it is yeah. also like a good, uh, uh, you know, brought, brought back some, some memories. Memories, right? Yeah, so <laughs> the way I like to interpret that is because what happens is, uh, you know, the way we've been raised, whether it is this, whether it's in America or whether it is in India, we always, you know, especially because we always think about something divine or something holy that's right. guiding uh, that's guiding our life. And so, you know, if children don't listen to the parents, it's like, okay, you will listen, at least you'll listen to the voice of the God if there is a divine. Just listen. And so by doing that in presence, whether it's to Ganesha, whether it is, usually we do it for Ganesha. It's like saying that, okay, I think I did something wrong. Please give me the illumination or please give me the light so that I can do much better as I go forward in my life. So it's sort of underneath the entire exercise, even though we, we thought of it as most, most an exercise, but there's a deep meaning behind that exercise. The deep meaning is that let's try to build an awareness. Let's try to build more concentration. Let's try to bring more focus into our own lives. Right. And also, you know, uh, you were mentioning about listening to the good things and everything. And I remember when, uh, you know, uh, we used to have a series of uh, um, CDs which had Western classical music for, by Bach and Beethoven and uh, uh, Brahms and all that. And each one, each uh, uh, music, uh, it, it, it was supposed to, uh, you know, trigger something right. in one part of your brain. And, uh, uh, you know, like for calm, uh, this thing, for sleep, for, uh, you know, concentration, all those things. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, it used to, sometimes we used to play it, especially with, uh, you know, when the kids were working or something like that, it would go on in the, in the speaker uh, or in the Walkman and, uh, you know, they would be listening to it. And it, I, I, I don't know uh, if it, it was, but, I personally, I felt, uh, you know, much more calmer, much yes. more uh, because of, uh, you know, it helped me because I enjoyed the music and it put me in a much better mood and also helped in, in concentration and, yeah. uh, but, uh, you know, focus. Correct. And you bring a very good point, Radhika, because there are several studies now where people have actually, you know, they, they you know, for all these, for, because the first question that comes into our mind is, does it really, how does it affect the brain and does it really affect the brain? And, you know, people have done these studies, beautiful studies where, yes, one thing is that you have to put in a lot of electrodes on your brain, but, you know, it, it may seem very simple. You're listening to a sound. Okay, let's, let's say 
you you got up in the morning and you heard the the crow okay you may think oh the crow is shouting it's a simple sound but behind that sound radhika there are so many areas in the brain that have to you know coordinate that function in order for you to appreciate that sound as a crow sound versus the sound from your spouse or the sound from the fire truck or the sound from the police uh, van you know these are all different sounds and and it's, it's what's what's amazing is when they do this functional uh, mri studies they notice that every time a sound comes in there are at least i would say 12 or 15 different areas not next to each other but different areas at different parts of the brain that light up okay so that's number one so there are more than it's not just one center there are several centers because remember one thing it's not just appreciating the sound it's also like putting it down as a memory and then in future when you listen to the sound you know that you know what is a fire fire truck sound you know what is a police car sound why is that because that sound has now laid down your memory in your brain center so there are several centers in the brain that get affected when you hear and it's the same true it's true for all the other sense organs as well in addition there are also functional mri studies that show what happens when you listen to a harsh sound versus a smooth sound mm. and it's amazing how different areas light up and that's the reason and these areas that light up will play with those specific hormones or neurochemicals that's the reason why when we hear some loud noise which is not harmonious we immediately react the way we react as opposed to a noise of a uh, you know the bell or the gong you know the gong in the in the in the in the, in the temple or the bell or you know a small child cooing all these are pleasant sounds why because behind those actually are an interplay of several hormones so that's the reason why what we bring in through these five senses is extremely important for the immunity of the brain which results in the immunity of the body as well right and uh, it also looks like you know you can practice this as as a human being as you know a person but it is also uh, like what our uh, ancestors and uh, grandparents and everybody used to say that you know uh, i was told when i was pregnant with uh, sandhya and uh, you know to listen yes. you know to listen to these uh, you know good good things not to uh, to read some you know good good books uh, so that you know it affects the child so yes. even at that tender age inside the womb the child is also affected by uh, what you bring in you bring what you listen to absolutely and yeah. absolutely and you know it's yeah. it's interesting again a nice point that you brought about uh, there was a reason and and uh, now these days as an ayurvedic consultant i was always tell my parents uh, my patients especially those those ladies who are pregnant you know what i tell them i'll say okay bring in harmonious impressions in addition i'll say you know take the take the recorder or the or the device yeah. where you're listening to sounds and drape it on your stomach okay and make sure that those sounds that you're listening not only you're listening but even the growing fetus is listening okay and it makes a big impression on the development of the brain of the fetus as well and so and that's the reason why traditionally even though in the olden days we never had these walkman kind of device or the iphone devices but still if you notice in our back then our grandparents or something they were always mm-hmm. play those you know those devotional songs especially in a home where the lady was pregnant and that was mainly to stimulate not just the not just to keep the women's the, the mother's moods better but also for the growing fetus and now you know we have these wonderful devices that you can actually drape it around your on your stomach especially when you're in the evening when you're lying down or when you're sleeping just keep it playing and i'm telling you there was a reason why people like you know they say abhimanyu and all these people responded yeah. to those sounds you know it it makes a big impact and time actually time magazine actually had a beautiful article several years ago about how all these sounds the various things that the that the mother brings in through the five sensory organs how it affects the growing fetus so right. a very very important point absolutely yeah uh the other thing i had a question is uh, that you know you were mentioning about uh, putting oil in in your ear and uh, that would that would help uh but there is also the belief that don't put anything in your ear anything foreign in your ear how would you uh, yeah. say that with that right so when we say foreign in the ear i've seen a lot of people putting the earbuds 
Okay, mm. the earbuds or I've seen people putting pencils or people are putting, you know, pens or even, even uh, you know, these sort of needles or, or, uh, or safety pins and all that. Right. These, are all the, these are all the things that we, are, we say always, please don't mess with your ears because that's not, I mean, I, the minute you, we, uh, the reason why people put that is because there's an irritation and the irritation comes because of accumulation of wax. Whenever there's an accumulation of wax or the other way around too, when there's dryness, when there's extremely dry, when the ears are extremely dry or when the ears are overloaded with wax, you get the feeling of itchiness, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's when you want to put something in your ears and scratch it and remove it or something. But whenever you put all those things, these are going to destroy the ear. So my friends, please don't do that. Never put them. On the other hand, applying oil is very, very safe. Applying oil is on in the ears, number one is not, I mean, direct one or two drops, because as I said, there's no hole there for it to mm -hmm. drain inside. It just gets absorbed very slowly into the eardrum. The, the absorption is very low. It's like putting oil on your skin or putting your oil on the scalp or in the eyes. Very, very safe, absolutely not dangerous at all. There are no herbs, it's a plain oil. And the good thing is, these are the oils that you're also eating. There's an oral intake of these oils. So whatever you take orally is what you're applying in these five sensory organs. So very safe, absolutely no problems. Anybody that has issues with the ears, you can do this safely without any hesitation. So I'm uh, going to into the questions that we have received uh, from, uh, you know, from past sessions before I open it up to the audience. Sure. Uh, the first question we have is, I thought eating was sufficient. Then you added physical exercise. Then you built on it mental exercise and then selfless service. Is there no one tool that we can practice, build immunity and sustain it? would love some quick shortcut practices unfortunately <laughs> whoever put that question unfortunately no it's we don't have a shortcut we don't have a shortcut practice i mean just think about it i give the i give the analogy of a car okay yes. when you go with a car the person the, the mechanic will never say okay i'm i'm dusting off the of the the dust on the car and you can take the car go and go away. no he takes minimum of 1 hour on your car okay and changes all the fluids and the filters. Now, as I said, the body is much more complex than the car. Yes. Okay, and there's so many things you have to address. Unfortunately, there is no one shortcut method. But, but remember, I in the past ex, uh, self, I mean, the past exercises, I also mentioned that try don't get overwhelmed by the number of things. Okay, start off with one step, build on it slowly. Second step, build on it slowly. Third step, build on it slowly. Fourth step. The reason why I'm saying that you have to bring in all these practices is because you can do as a standalone each one, okay? The only problem with that is like, let's say if you do only eating properly, but your mind and your emotions are all over the place, that benefits from eating will not come at all, my friends, okay? Because your body and mind have to be in place. I mean, your mind and emotions have to be in place, which means that you have to add on some things for the brain or the mind, which means you have to do mental exercise, which means right. you have to do selfless services, okay? So yes, you have to build in all these things in order to sustain those benefits. So unfortunately, there's no shortcut, but what I'm saying is don't get overwhelmed, go slowly, but make sure that you build, as you go slowly, build each step on, on your journey. I mean, you know, it, it, that's a fact because, my, you know, I remember my father's advice uh, when I said I don't have time, uh, you know, uh, at that time he would say, Einstein also had 24 hours. You also have 24 hours. So the time is the same, but he was able to achieve so much. And so, he, you know, it's the how you make use of your time. Right. And, and you know, uh, plus, yeah. yeah, sorry, go ahead, plus, sorry. Sorry, no, uh, but you, you know, you, you, you are actually, you, uh, if, you, if you put your mind to it, you can do it because, you know, you're many times you are, and, and in this world, uh, this thing, you are multitask. You are doing a lot of stuff. You're watching TV when you're eating. You're, uh, you know, um, uh, doing, uh, uh, for my, me, when I'm watching TV, I'm knitting or I'm crocheting or, you know, so, so those things, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And also, if you think that this is an investment in yourself, that's how, right. uh, you know, you're, you're just doing it for your health, your sanity, your benefit. And, uh, you know, and that way you can give the best of yourself to others. 
Right. So that that yes, yes, it is not a shortcut, but do not think of it. it this is my uh, uh, feedback. I mean, like you know, my thought process on listening to you is that do not think of it as multiple things. Think of it as you know, as a thali. The yes. food you have is you know you have the rice, you have the dal, you have the sabji. Yeah, but uh, together it becomes a full meal, and that's Good. what you're doing with yourself. Good energy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, what he says is absolutely true, Radhika. And you know, as as Radhika mentioned, so health is your personal property. I always say that health is your personal property, and you need to take good care of your health. And you know what? The best thing is do like if you think it is overwhelming on a day to day basis, do like the way I do it, or Padma does it, or even Radhika does it. On weekends is a time when you have you know weekends is, is you have more time. So try to do a lot of those activities on weekends, and then on the weekdays, whatever you can. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, whatever you can, I'm not going to say do this or do that, whatever you can do it, try to bring in those practices and uh, yeah, and, ex and try to experience your own self as to how you're doing, you know, based yeah. on how many you bring it and how many you don't do it. Yes. Uh, so the second question I have is, I'm doing everything you suggested on a regular basis, yet come spring and early summer, my allergies and other health issues kick in. Where am I going wrong? Well, I mean, you are not going wrong anyway. It's all you're doing is, I mean, you're looking, you're looking a little prematurely. Just remember one thing, if you keep on doing this, it takes a long time because remember for the last, whatever, 15 years, 16 years, maybe our, the way we were doing our dietary practices, maybe the way we were doing our practices was all not harmonious. And now after listening to my lectures, probably you started doing it. And so it, it's like what, six months to one year, but Remember one thing, my friends, healing takes a long time. So if you feel better until spring or summer, that means you are on the, in that journey, okay? Uh, and But you're not completely done, okay? So just be on, on, the, on whatever practices you're doing, keep on doing it. And in time to come, what happens is you will not only build immunity, but you'll sustain the immunity. See, to overcome your allergies or whatever issues, health, health issues you have on, that come during springtime or summer, please remember one thing, those, those are just telling you that you're still not there. So keep doing all the things and there'll be a time when you will definitely overcome. I mean, I, there was a time seven, eight years ago, I used to have, you know, for a couple of years, I experienced some allergies, but you know, I started doing all the right things and uh, you know, it's hardly there. I mean, I, I won't say I'm completely out of it, but it's very, very, it's sometimes I don't even notice it, but I know it's there. Uh, and all it took was three years or four years of sustained practices. So you are in the right direction, whoever put this question, but just be with it. Yes. And, you know, uh, not just allergies. Uh, and I'm talking from personal experience. Uh, you know, I used to suffer from sciatica pain. And uh, Ram uh, gave me a couple of the yoga exercises and stretches to do. And I'm really happy. You know, I used to, I did it. Um, religiously followed his direction and did it for a few months. And I'm ha happy to report that, you know, the sciatica pain comes occasionally, but it is not that intense. Like I used to, it used to take me five minutes to just get up right. from the sofa. And now it's not that way. Beautiful. So uh, it is uh, definitely, uh, you know, if, uh, what I would encourage is as a follower, uh, you know, for of Ram's uh, advice, it is something that definitely, my friends, uh, you know, if you fall, do what he says, it definitely has, you reap the benefits. Nice. So th then last uh, question I have uh, before I open it up is, I want to motivate others into doing selfless service, but your advice is not to publicize the services I do. How do I spread the message? <laughs> Uh, well, I never said don't uh, don't spread the message. All I said was don't bring in a lot of egoistic tendencies when you spread when you do your selfless service. Like for example, now last week, last month, when I talked about selfless service, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you you need to tell me. Was there any kind of egoism when I spoke about it? All I did was I I gave the benefits of selfless exercise. I told you why it is necessary. I said selfless service helps to boost up your mind, immunity, and your body. 
and it, this is what we want to sustain our immunity. Okay, it was a plain advice. It was a plain suggestion. Okay, but in that, I don't think I ever mentioned as to all the things that I'm doing because there is no need to do that. Okay, so in the same way, you can spread the message. I'm not saying don't spread the message. Please spread the message. In fact, the more people you spread the message about selfless service, the better for the world because we want to see a world where everybody helps the other person selflessly and it builds immunity. So spread the message. The only thing is don't make any comparisons, don't make any judgments, don't bring in all those uh, you know, uh, issues that will provoke the other person or provoke the society or provoke your own self. That's all. So please spread the message, yes. Uh, but do it in a manner that is more pleasing and more accepting for the other people. That's all. Yes. And seva is a kind of prayer. I mean, you see that at the at Gurudwaras and everything, that is what they promote. And, you know, it is a kind of prayer. So right. you're serving God by serving others. So right. that's it. So, uh, yes. So, so now I can open it up uh, to any questions that anybody in the audience has. Like I said, you can either uh, unmute yourself and ask the questions, or you can type up a chat and I'll read them out for you. Ram, this is Vaidhi. Hi. Hi. I, I have two questions. One is the oleation, putting the massage oil in the ears, will it uh, um, cause any wax buildup in the ear? And the second question is, um, this, since this is uh, from the ear, the passages to the nasal, will this help in uh, preventing sinus headaches? Uh, yeah. Uh so let me answer the first question. Build, uh, does oil build up the wax? No, I don't think it does. I, at least I've not seen so far, a lot of my patients have done it and nobody's complained about, about building up of wax. Maybe it's possible that they didn't have a lot of wax and so it didn't help them. Uh, I mean, it helped them, uh, but for people who already have a lot of wax, uh, you know, so here's the thing, you can use it as a preventative or you can use it as a treatment procedure. Treatment is only if you're experiencing some issues, like let's say you're having some ringing in the ears or you're having some, some kind of uh, problems in the ear, then it becomes a treatment procedure. Preventative, in case of preventative, we're not using a lot of oil, okay? We are just using one or two drops. So my, I mean, in, in the text that we studied and, and when I put this practice to my patients, I have not heard so far about anybody complaining about buildup of wax. So I don't think it is, um, it, it does that, okay? So you can safely use that. Number two, whether it helps the sinuses, there may be some uh, some involvement with it, uh, even though there's not a direct connection with the, with the sinuses, but maybe through the brain or maybe through the mandibular area. Uh, my suggestion is for people who have sinus issues, do a combination. And I'll talk about the nasal pathway next month uh, uh, in this session. Uh, a combination of putting oil in the nose as well as in the ear. So you, need, you do that simultaneously. Both these will then help and will help and sustain the, 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 the problems with the sinuses. Okay. Thank you, Ram. Thank you, Ram. Sure. sure. Uh, hi, Ram. This is Shankari here. Hi. Uh, thank you again, once again. Uh, sure. Both you and Radhika. Uh, sure. But, you know. I have a question in follow up uh, uh, after hearing uh, Radhika talking about, um, you know, the uh, sciatica pain getting a little bit, uh, you know, relieved for her. Uh, I, I do face a severe sciatica. In fact, I had the MRI session for tomorrow for my back, uh, this one. I just want to know, like, what exactly, if you can't do it in, 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 you know, in this kind of session with everybody or if you want to have one on one, that's fine with me. But uh, I would like to know like key things where I can just get a little bit relieved from this severe pain. Okay, Radhika, you want to talk first about your experience and then I can talk to her separately offline about what she can do. Uh, you're muted, Radhika. Uh, so when I, I had a sciatica pain, I used to find it very difficult to get out of bed or get up and, and walk. And many times it used to be even excruciating pain sitting down because uh, it had, a, a, you know, it was like a nerve which was really, really tender. So uh, Ram suggested, you know, very, very slowly, it wasn't uh, it, this thing very slowly, he suggested some stretches, yoga stretches. 
and slow uh, once I, you know it was more of the bhujangasana and uh, uh, and and uh, you know the uh, uh, just straightening the back a little bit or even uh, relieving the back by uh, putting my uh, lying down on the floor and putting my feet on on a chair uh, so that it relieved the pressure a little so once i then after i graduated from that it was then uh, uh, it moved to you know i did have to have a sciatica injection and and then moved on it brought a little bit down and then moved on to uh, stretches like uh, pigeon pose and uh, also some chair pose and everything and that over it took me a few months i must i'm telling you it was not overnight but it took me i I was not able to, uh, you know, get out of bed and uh, uh, straighten for about. It took me five, ten minutes to even straighten up, but uh, it it went away uh, and uh, you know it became much more bearable, and uh, so that is what uh, that was my experience. But Ram probably will have something that is customized for you, and yeah. uh, you know help you with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shankar, you can call me and uh, we can discuss about that. But just for the audience, you know, I'm, because you know, sciatica is a very common feature. A lot of people face that. I'm seeing a lot of people. In fact, that's one of the most commonest complaints. And you know, the exact reason we do not. Again, there are so many reasons for that. It could be poor posture. It could be the way you're sitting. It could be the way you're standing. It could be the amount of stress you're just mental stress itself. And that's one of the reasons why I always talk about keeping the body, mind, and emotions uh, working as one unit. Mental stress is a great, great uh, trigger for uh, sciatica pain. Um, it also is, is dependent on, on how you, uh, how you uh, lift your weights. It also depends on how you had uh, uh, your child. I know a lot of mothers who had uh, you know, uh, C-sections and all that. Later on, you know, they have, have we, this again, um, this is not from a scientific based study, but this is based on what these people have told me, the mothers have told me, um, they tend to suffer a lot from sciatica. So different reasons for different people. And so, you know, we want to make sure that, 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 that you know, this gets addressed. And, uh, you know, if it's unbearable, uh, please make sure that you get your, uh, you know, steroid-based injection. Usually that's what they do. They give a steroid-based uh, steroid medication. But the question is not about the medication. The question is, how do you sustain those improvements? Okay, because the medication, the steroid, it helps for a moment. It's a momentary help because what happens is it covers up the pain for a period of, again, depends on the individual from period of uh, one week to about six weeks or eight weeks. Okay. But you want to sustain that improvement. And so what I always tell my patients is that, okay, let's come back. And then after that, we'll visit, revisit, and we'll do some yoga exercises, stretching exercises, dietary practices, very good. All these have to be combined. And then, you know, so what happens is it really helps in a person's relieving, relieving the, 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 the pain completely, as Radhika mentioned. So Shankar, you can call me later and we can talk about that, okay? Okay, sure. Thank, thank you very much, yeah. Ramgar, this is uh, Madhavi. Thank you, Hi. Radhika Gar. And uh, uh, I think most of our answer, questions are already answered through your conversations. Uh, but um, uh, my question now is, uh, maybe you have answered it several times. Uh, now that we are moving from winter into the spring mode, we have more sun. So um, I think we have to change our foods according to the climate, oils also according to the climate. So can you please give us a small insight uh, into like what are the food and uh, changes we have to do with respect to the changing climate from going from winter into spring now? Right. So uh, it's a very good, very great question. Um, so what we always say in Ayurveda is that you have to eat seasonally based foods, okay? And uh, so uh, if you go to any grocery store, uh, the pro problem with that is, and, and this is true of Indian grocery stores as well, the problem is they get these bulk foods from all over the world. And so you lose track of what exactly is seasonal, okay? So my suggestion is best is for you to go to the farmer's market. Now, I'm not saying you buy from the farmer's market. All I'm saying is, because you know, just because it's farmer's market doesn't mean it's organic, okay? Uh, they can you they may be using fertilizers or all that stuff. All I'm saying is if you go to the farmer's market, you'll get a good idea of what is in season because that's what the farmers will sell only those things that are in season. Okay. So go to the farmer's market and look at the which the abundant vegetables. This is the time when you'll see a lot of you know new vegetables coming up in the in the fruits are coming up. 
a lot of different kinds of vegetables uh, you don't need ground gro root grown vegetables because winter is gone spring is coming up so actually spring is coming up so now you need more of you know a nice rich juicy kind of vegetables and fruits um, always make sure that you eat a lot of warm lot of warm food so you know try just because you know spring is being followed uh by summer but in some places it's already a lot of heat is developing okay so please may don't make don't may, uh, go to rush i mean don't rush into taking all cold things just because you think it's cold out there you know make sure that uh i mean it's hot, hot out there make sure that you still need warm foods fresh foods uh typically organically foods uh, as i said a lot of juice uh, juicy fruits and vegetables is what we look for and uh, you know if you go back to what i said uh, earlier uh, always make sure that you are what where why when you eat your food so keep those timings regularly and you know a lot of people especially couples who are out there working it's always a challenge to prepare fresh foods uh, to prepare it fresh on the spot so my suggestion is for all those people who cannot prepare fresh foods don't worry about it don't take it don't get stressed out about about that instead think about the other things you know when are you eating uh where are you eating are you mindfully aware of what you're eating so bring in all those practices and for 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 people who need specifically a diet thing i can talk about that in greater detail next month uh but you know just practice what i've told earlier and uh, try to go to the farmers market and see what's in season that's my best advice thank you any other questions So, all right, I think Radhika looks like uh, everyone is either happy or everyone is not very happy. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, so it looks like uh, we can wrap up this session if nobody else has any other questions. I'm just opening it up. Uh, okay. So, thank you again, Ram. Uh, I look uh, forward to these sessions to get your insight and your wisdom uh, every month. And uh, we will be continuing uh, this session every month. And uh, so, I'm hoping that you can also, as, as our participants, spread the word and help us spread the word so that we can spread the joy and, uh, and Ram's wisdom to uh, more of the community. And uh, so uh, we at NBHC are a nonprofit and we are striving our best to bring all these things to your, uh, you know, so that we can, we can do this as a community offering. And we would appreciate if you can, uh, you know, donate uh, and open up your hearts and uh, go to our website, see what all is available, what all events we have, and also uh, what all uh, blogs and everything, all the information, it is rich with information. And uh, so uh, please go there and share, and all these other videos will also be available uh, for sharing. So, uh, in, and uploaded in YouTube. So please use that and uh, uh, open up your hearts and uh, donate to us. Uh, we would appreciate that. And uh, we will uh, strive our best to bring everything to your attention. I just had one um, uh, announcement to make. Uh, there is a Sudha Raghunathan concert, which is coming up on March 27th. And if you are interested in that, uh, we have shared that information in the Good Living Practices. So if you are interested in that, uh, please, uh, uh, you know, uh, subscribe and, and uh, buy the tickets. Uh, it is supposed to be a very good session. And uh, uh, so we are looking forward to having more people attend it and benefit from it. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Thank you, Ram. See you next Thank you. month. Thank you very much, Adhika. Thank you very much, my friends. We'll see you next month Thank again. You. Be well. Yeah, Stay you. safe. Thank you, Ram.